Has this ever happened to you? You sit down to a nice, delicious meal of spaghetti squash topped with marinara sauce, envisioning that you're going to recreate something that's identical to uh, the spaghetti noodles with marinara from your youth, and you're going to fill your mouth with it, and it's going to be delicious and enjoyable and rich and just full of flavor. And so you heap it onto your fork and you shove it into your mouth there, and it just turns to ashes. It's watery, it's limp, it's got none of the characteristics of spaghetti. It's just horrible and disgusting. I'm Chase W. Beck. I have a PhD in anthropology. Join me as we learn about the different ways food and culture intersect on Dr. Beck's Epicurean Delights. So we've got one chance to make good spaghetti squash. We're going to make coconut curry spaghetti squash. And to do that, you need some spaghetti squash, about three to four cups once cooked. A little bit of ginger root, some galangal. We need about a tablespoon of madras curry powder. Some crushed chili pepper. That's right, it's time to get capsi. And a little bit of coconut milk. What I don't have pictured here is some salt and pepper to taste and, some tables, and a tablespoon of oil for roasting the spices. In order to get the long strands from the spaghetti squash, we're going to cut it in half down the center latitudinally. So just think of the stem and the bottom as being the poles. You're going to cut as if you are the cutting the equator of a globe. And now we're going to scoop out the seeds. And there we go, all scooped out. We're gonna cook this relatively low at about 300 to 325 degrees so that we maintain the strength of the strands because we're also going to be cooking this again on the stove. Uh, it helps to have a little bit of water in the pan. I'm adding maybe about an inch, maybe a little less than an inch. This keeps it from scorching on the bottom while it's in the oven. And now it's fully cooked. And I just am going to take my fork and pull out the strands little by little. And this is how you collect them very easily. And as you can see, this is why we cut it latitudinally so that none of the strands are broken by our knife. And then we scoop out as many full strands as we can get. While we do that, it might be a perfect time for a botany minute. Spaghetti squash contains carotenoids, which are very helpful in reducing or preventing disease. A study in 2012 by Wadas, Miodizuska, and Kalinowski found that the amount of carotenoids is greatly dependent upon how much sunlight the plant gets while growing, as well as the spacing. The further apart the plants are grown from each other, the more carotenoids become present or available in the squash itself. Here I am cutting up the galangal. Galangal is closer related to ginger. It's a little bit woodier. I'm removing the peel and then I'm going to grate it with a microplane. Anthropology alert. As I mentioned in a previous episode, squashes are native to Central and North America. According to Michael Nee's article from 1990, spaghetti squash belongs to Cucurbita pipo, which also is the same species that gives us the jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, acorn squash, zucchini squash, and patty pan squashes. While I mentioned in my stuffed pumpkin episode that a variety of Cucurbita pipo was cultivated in the Eastern Agricultural Complex for its seeds, another variety was cultivated in North America and Mexico, as well as Central America for its flesh. And this is the variety that gives us the spaghetti squash today. Squash along with maize and beans makes up the three sisters of Mesoamerican agriculture. However, Paris lets us know in his article in 1989 that spaghetti squash likely came back to America from the Far East after being cultivated there. So now I have the galangal and the ginger ground up and I'm portioning out the curry powder and the red chili flakes. Now that I have my squash ready and my spices measured out, it's time to bring it all together in this pan. And I think that I should explain for a moment why I decided to make this dish. To me, spaghetti squash is often used as a 
substitution for spaghetti noodles. However, just putting marinara sauce on top of spaghetti squash was never very satisfying because the flavors are not the same. And so in order to avoid that dissonance that occurs when you bite into a mouthful of spaghetti squash covered in marinara sauce, expecting spaghetti, I decided to do something completely different that not only highlights the flavor of the spaghetti squash, but also enhances it and complements it. By serving it with these spices in more of a curry manner, you're not, your brain is not thinking, this is spaghetti, this is something that needs to taste like something that I, I'm aware of or that I, I'm familiar with. Your brain is saying, you know, this is something new. This is a pairing of, of sauces and seasoning that doesn't have any preconceived notions in the way that something like spaghetti noodles and marinara sauce already has. So I have my spices all toasted up and it's time to add the galangal and the ginger. We'll let that cook for a little bit and allow the flavors to combine before adding the coconut milk. With the sauce all combined, it's time to add the spaghetti squash. And then uh, we'll just get it nice and warmed up and it'll be ready to serve. While we take the time to watch this spaghetti squash cook and these flavors meld, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for tuning in today. I really enjoy the support that you've given me. I've uh, undertaken this this project of sharing some of my favorite recipes with you. And I have a lot more amazing recipes planned. We've already done some of my favorite recipes uh, in previous episodes. And uh, I just want to encourage you to go check them out and leave a comment. I would love to get some comments on any suggestions you have for recipes that I should try out, recipes you want me to um, attempt and then discuss. I could uh, bring some other aspects of, of the culture cultural origins of those recipes as well as like uh, various analyses or discussions of the the origins of the plants or animals contained in those recipes so I'd, I'd really love uh, to get some feedback from you guys about what you think
Now that it's all mixed up and combined, it's time to serve it. I decided the best way to serve this would be to use the spaghetti squash shells that I had laying around. I thought it looked like an appropriate bowl to serve these in, so I cut them down to size just a little bit and filled it full of a heaping portion of the spaghetti squash mixture and sat down for an enjoyable dish. Here's the final result. I have garnished it with a little bit of cilantro and some more of that dried hot chile powder that I have here. And uh, it's time to take a bite. Mmm, it's quite excellent. It has none of the wateriness from the previous dish and it's full of flavor, packed full of flavor because we cooked in all the flavor rather than just layering it on top. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you have a recipe or that you'd like me to try out or an ingredient that you'd like more insight on or some more cultural background on any of these things. Uh, I'll catch you next time on Dr. Beck's Epicurean Delights.